The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age, Jesus says. I realized when I was looking back at my notes from last year that we have now worshipped for one entire liturgical year in our parish hall. Doesn't seem possible. Um, last year, Trinity Sunday was the first Sunday worshiping back on our campus in our parish hall. We have been worshiping for three years, three liturgical <laughs> seasons and three months with our Zoom services. I can't keep keep these things in my head. I can't. It's hard for me to to. There's so much has happened to us, um, with us, that I can't keep things straight. But when I look at my calendar, I can, I can tell what happened. So when I was looking back at my notes from last year, I decided to use the reading that we had last year from Paul. Because it's still, I think, the best reading. Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. As Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. We've been through a lot as a parish, but we can still rejoice because God is with us. Jesus is with us. And we continue to live out the truth that the church is not the buildings. We've learned through all of our struggles that the church is us, the body of Christ, that our part of the body of Christ, the people. And as much as we love our beautiful nave, the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd is alive and well no matter where we gather. And we have been gathering in our parish hall now for a year, which is hard to believe. And many people from the diocese who've come to visit us have said that our parish hall is a much better place to worship than several of the parishes in the diocese have, which is an interesting comparison. Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. When Paul talks about hope, he, he says that hope comes out of suffering and endurance and character forged in that suffering through our endurance. The kind of hope that Paul is talking about is the hope that lives in our hearts, no matter what the outer circumstances. It's the same hope, the mystical hope that Cynthia Bourgeau writes about in her wonderful little book, Mystical Hope. Hope that is not tied to outcome, but hope that is the communion with God the indwelling love of God in our very hearts. 
as Jesus said, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So hope does not disappoint us, and we do not lose hope. We cannot lose hope because we can never fall out of God's love. Last Sunday was Pentecost, as you know, our celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Today is Trinity Sunday, a Sunday that celebrates the uniqueness of the Christian faith. Christianity is the only world religion that believes that God is at the same time one and three. And how we believe that is something for theologians to continue to argue about throughout the centuries. So we've moved in the liturgical season from Christ's cross and re resurrection from Easter to the giving of the Spirit to the church at Pentecost. And now we contemplate the mystery of God as one in three and three in one. In the beginning, as we heard from Ad reading from Genesis, God created all that is, and the Spirit moved over the waters. In the beginning, Christ, the Word, was with God. Remember from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So from the beginning, there was communion. There was relationship. From the beginning, we have this dance of relation between God and Christ and the Holy Spirit. Maybe a dance is the best way to understand the mystery of God in three persons. Because God is, in essence, a relationship of persons, constantly in motion. So what does it mean for us that we're made in the image of a triune God? Well, it means that we are created for community, and we are not meant to be alone mystery that we call the Trinity calls us into a life of love, a life of embracing diversity, of seeking to include all people. We can agree to disagree on some things and still remain in relationship. Something that doesn't happen a lot now in the world around us, not as much as it should. And the Trinity calls each one of us to become our own unique selves while being in communion with others. Remember, Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That has been given to us. We've been through a lot and there is a lot to navigate in the weeks to come. And I will be with you for three more Sundays after this Sunday. But remember, Jesus is with us. We, are, we can never fall out of God's love. Amen.